Hello. Today, let's talk about compilation, interpretation, and programming environments. Let's start by looking at two different approaches to language implementation. The first approach is compilation. In compilation, we have a source program, which we feed to a compiler, and then the compiler produces a target program, which might be in assembly language or in machine code or some other representation. And then, but that representation is executable. So we can then run that target program, and it will take input and produce output. We can also implement languages in a more direct way, called an interpreter. So an interpreter takes both the source program and the input of the program. It will execute that program one language construct at a time. And as the program requests input, it'll pass on the input to the program. And then as each construct produces output, the interpreter will produce the output. So two different styles of implementing languages. Where do these styles come from? Well, we have another programming language person, Grace Murray Hopper. She was a mathematics professor, computing pioneer, and a rear admiral in the US Navy. While working on an early computer called the Mark II, Hopper's team discovered a moth in a relay, uh, short-circuiting things, and, and she wrote, this is the first actual case of a bug being found. So now you know where the first bug came from. Grace Hopper developed the Flowmatic language, her goal was to make it based on English words to make computing more accessible to non-mathematicians. She actually coined the term compiler and later played a key role in the design of COBOL. So why might you want to use an interpreter versus a compiler? Well, interpretation supports a lot of flexibility because you're really running the program one construct at a time. At any point, you can see you know, the state of the program, uh, you can run one step forwards, sometimes you can even run a step backwards, uh, and you can get really good diagnostics for how the program is executing. And so often, excellent source level debuggers can be provided by interpreters. On the other hand, compilation generally leads to better performance. Uh, basically, the, the principle here is that there's a lot of decisions that you have to make in transforming source code into executable code. Those decisions can be made at compile time, and they don't have to be repeated, perhaps over and over at runtime, thus saving effort. Compilers can also provide good debugging support, but it takes a lot more work. In practice, compilation and interpretation are often mixed. So one model in which this might happen is you have a source program that is translated, basically through a compiler, into some kind of intermediate program. But it's not, say, assembly language. It's an intermediate program which is executable by some virtual machine. An example might be Java bytecode, which can be executed by the Java virtual machine. And so then that virtual machine can take that bytecode and the input and produce the output. And so inside the virtual machine, there might be an interpreter, which does most of the actual work. What makes compilers and interpreters different is that compilers do a thorough analysis of the source. They really have to understand the meaning of the source code in order to do an effective translation. And then they transform it in non-trivial ways into another form. Whereas an interpreter might do some of that same thorough analysis, but it might not. It might just sort of start executing immediately, uh, and it might not do any significant transformation. It just runs the program as it is. Thinking more about how programming languages are implemented, we often have the source program, but that source program might use other libraries. Uh, for example, Fortran is well known for scientific computation and has great scientific libraries that uh, scientists use when using Fortran. So in this case, we'd have the Fortran program, which is passed through a compiler, and then the compiler generates machine language, but that machine language might be incomplete because it doesn't have those libraries in it yet. And so at the same time, the library routines, which might have been previously compiled by a compiler, will be passed along with the machine language for the program by a linker. And that linker links them together and produces a complete program that can be executed. It's often the case that assembly language is an intermediate step in producing machine language from source. So the source program is, is a language like, like C or Python. We transform that uh, by, via compiler into assembly language, which is a textual or readable format uh, that, that still describes one instruction at the machine level at a time. 
An assembler then takes that textual format of those instructions and turns it into machine language instructions, which are encoded in a binary form. Now, assembly language is very useful because uh, it allows programmers to actually you know, work at, at the low level of instructions when they need to. Um, and also, you can inspect the uh, assembly language that your source program uh, produced, your compiler produced from the source program, if you want to know what the code looks like. Uh, for example, to see if it's as efficient as you need it to be. Uh, so this was a good idea, and it comes from another one of our programming language people, Kathleen Booth. So Kathleen Booth uh, co-founded an early Department of Numerical Automation, which is now the School of Computer Science and Information Systems, at uh, Birkbeck College at the University of London, uh, way back in 1957. Uh, she co-developed co a number of computing systems there and invented the first assembly language for the ARC computing system. She also wrote a book on how to program the uh, Apex-C system. Um, later in life, she explored neural networks, uh, so presaging the AI, AI revolution we see today as a way to understand how animals recognize patterns. Going on and looking at more uh, aspects of language implementation, there's the concept of a, of a preprocessor, for example, as seen in C. Uh, so the C preprocessor allows several versions of a program to be compiled from the same source. A preprocessor, for example, might take configuration parameters and include or exclude different parts of the source code, uh, for example, as needed to run on different machines. Uh, so for example, Linux has many, many different preprocessor options uh, that allow it to be compiled for many, many different platforms. So the preprocessor takes the source program and produces a modified source program, which is then compiled down to assembly language in the usual way by a compiler. A lot of high-level languages, for example, early versions of C++, use C as an intermediate language. So the target of a compiler might not be assembly language or machine code. It might be another language like C. Uh, so in this case, the source program might be compiled from C++ to C by a first compiler, and then the C compiler then transforms the C down to assembly language. Another idea in compilers is what's called the just-in-time compiler. So let's look at the compiler infrastructure for Java. A Java program uh, is compiled by a Java compiler into an intermediate form called Java bytecode. Bytecode was developed for Java because uh, it's very small. Um, and so it can be transformed, Java was written to be sent over networks. Uh, it could run in your browser in the early days of browsers. Um, and so the bytecode was uh, small, so it could be sent over the, over the network without much delay. Now the bytecode can be interpreted directly by a bytecode interpreter. Uh, but what often happens is it's compiled into machine language. But remember, if we're downloading the Java program over a web connection, Maybe uh, we don't have a lot of time to compile it, right? We want our program to produce results right away. And so a just-in-time compiler is one that translates bytecode to machine code just before execution, just in time. Uh, so uh, JIT compilers are often less complicated. They do less transformation than, uh, and less optimization in particular than uh, ordinary compilers, but they're very fast. So you don't spend much time compilation, uh, compiling things. And of course, like any other compiler, the output of a JIT compiler would be machine language, which we then pass input to and get output from. Finally, integrated development environments uh, will take compilers, but also other tools, and give you one, it, one unified development environment where you can do everything at once. Uh, an IDE provides editors that might include syntax highlighting to make code more readable, autocomplete uh, to help you finish uh, your code and figure out the names of library functions, refactoring to help you modify the names of variables in consistent ways, help you uh, jump from definitions to uses and, back, and, and, and backwards. Um, they might provide compilers, uh, but they would take the output of the compilers, for example, error messages, and link them to the source in the editor so you can see them very easily. They might provide debuggers that show execution along with the program values, and you can progress through the source in the editor uh, using the debugger. They might provide linters and other tools 
that allow you to run and show the output of those. Uh, they might integrate with build tools, which build a large pro project automatically, or source control tools that uh, manage your source and look at uh, integrating changes from multiple developers. So in our book and videos, we focus mostly on compilers, but all of these tools build on similar ideas. And so learning about uh, language implementation via compilers will help you and prepare you to, to use and perhaps even develop all of these other kinds of tools as well. Let's do an exercise to check our understanding. Explain the distinction between interpretation and compilation. What are the comparative advantages and disadvantages of the two approaches? To answer the exercise, an interpreter executes source code one construct at a time. Interpreters start executing code quickly and can provide good information about executing programs. A compiler transforms source code into a lower level form, often assembly or machine code. A compiler might take a little more time to produce that code, but the code it produces runs faster than interpreted code. <laughs> 